still there? Yeah. Good gracious. I don't know whether he would know, mm. but everyone else is um, not here, are they? No, no. 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 He thought, well, if I don't do this, I don't, we won't do anything because we've been waiting years That's and years right. for a home. Yes. And um, so he decided to join. We didn't move till the day after Boxing Day because my mother-in-law, we, we lived with her mm. uh, and my sister in we were a very crowded house, actually. Mm. And, We'd lived there nearly nine years, um, and she was so upset at us leaving, so we couldn't leave her for Christmas. So we decided to stay and come, we came the day after Boxing Day. Forty members joined, and before we started up in here, eight of them, for some reason or other, resigned. And left the scheme. So instead of needing 32 houses up here, we only needed the 22. Mm. So that land was available and it was sold That's to a build at Chelsea in here to pay the road charges. to give up five years of every weekend and one week of your holiday and of course the wives gave it up in one some way because they could be together well come down here but you couldn't do anything else and the children it was quite a sacrifice the industries and factories in Kilburn, Cricklewood and Wilsdon were heavily bombed during the war Wilsdon had more bombs than parts of the East End in 1940. Thousands of homes were damaged. Most of us were amateurs. I was only, as I say, one builder, one carpenter, mm. one, one electrician, but they passed their skills to others. Um, and of course, a lot of them did the painting, there's all sorts of things like that, naturally. After the war, rebuilding was slow. People had to live in overcrowded, poorly maintained homes. Some took matters into their own hands. 40 North London ex-servicemen set up the Wilsdon Self-Build Housing Association to build new homes from scratch. In 1953, the group found three parcels of land in Chesham 26 miles from London. They were determined to succeed, although few of them had any building skills. I can remember coming down on the, um, the old bus and um, used to come down from Hemel and there's a very steep hill oh. down and up. Bovington. Yeah. No, Bovington. Mm. And um, everybody used to cheer to get the bus up the other side, otherwise I don't think it would have made it. Because there's, there was one mechanic on the um, self-build scheme, mm. uh, Bert Manning, I think his name was. Yes, well, yeah. And um, he used to have to nurture this bus because it wasn't in tip-top condition. It was, um, you know, string and rubber bands and <laughs> holding it together. Now, the ladies used to do the painting. Dad used to say, do the bricklaying, and I used to get in the way. So, <laughs> but um, no, we had a very good um, relationship. All, all the people were really close to each other. They had to be, otherwise it would not have um, happened. They relied on their one plumber, bricklayer, electrician and carpenter to teach them. In 1958, five years later, they'd completed the last of the 32 brick houses in Hamden Avenue and Barclay Avenue. Although most of the original families have moved, three still live in the houses they built, and they celebrated the 50th anniversary of their achievement in 2008.